Hey guys, welcome back. So in today's video we're going to talk about controllers and controller is part of the MVC architecture which stands for model view controller and controller is pretty much the brain and this brain will manipulate the model which is something that talks to their database to to show you what you, you would see on the screen as a user. And you as a user would interact with the controller to do this whole dance of getting data from a database to show to the user. That is as simple as I can describe it. And without further ado, let's get on with developing or generating what we call a controller. So to generate a controller, you give a command rails generate controller. And you give a name. So we're going to use something called, develop something called catalogs. Notice that I use plural. Um, that is something that the, the Ruby framework developers really suggest to name your controllers in plural form and to name your models in singular. You will see that later, but what we created is a controller, a view, a spec, which is for testing, helpers, which we'll talk about later, and assets, pretty much your JavaScript and your CSS for interactions and styling. So without further ado, what we'll do next is we'll actually go to our routes file and notice that I've already put typed in something called resources catalog. And what this does is it generates a bunch of URLs so that when you go to the browser and you type in something like localhost catalogs, uh, sorry, catalogs wrong, index, then that will lead you to the, the URL or the, the function in catalogs. But that is not running right now. That's because what I have to do is I have to do Rails S. And this will really start the Webrick server, which is our local development server, so that we can run our changes locally. So we refresh. It says that we have an unknown database, and that is correct. That is because we need to set up our database. So what you want to do here is you want to do a rake db create. And what that'll do is it would basically just create your database. And after it creates your database, you'll want to write run rake db migrate to to start up and set up all this the database that that you've just created. So now that we got that, if we refresh, then we get something. We get an unknown action. The action show could not be found for Calix controller. And when this happens, it, the the app is basically telling you that you they need to need to show function. So if we do def show and we do end, and that's how you kind of define a function. And let's say that we need to create a view for this. So basically what you're doing is you're going to create a view in this catalogs folder because we're messing around with the catalogs controller. Let's save this first. And we could do something like p hello world. P. And what we'll save this as is we'll save this as show dot html dot erb. And this is basically uh, embedded Ruby. That's, I believe that's what the ERP stood for, but that's basically how we generate our view for this function. So if we go back, we do a refresh, then there you go. We get the, the, we get the hello world that we just typed in this view. So that's a really simplistic way of showing you how things work. And if we do something called rake route, it'll show you all the all the all the actions that are available just by typing in this resource catalog. So by typing in resources catalog, it generates a bunch of functions that you can use. The one that we just call is called catalog show. So this little catalog, that is our controller, and that is our action, as shown by the the little the little title here. So if we if we reflect that in our controller, this is our controller, and that's the show action. And you can see that the it, the, the the HTTP call is is a get is a get call it's a get verb to tell you that we're actually we want to retrieve the page retrieve the function the catalog show function and show that to the user. So that's a little bit about how how to generate controllers and how to display something out to a page for the user. So we're gonna go through a little bit more about controllers in later videos so but I just wanted to give you a short taste of how to generate a controller and how to just throw something on a screen really really quickly 
Please rate, comment, and subscribe if you like this video. If you don't, then please just don't dislike and just leave it at like that. If you do, then I'll see you guys at the next video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. Bye.